how do you introduce someone like the Honorable Jesse White? I'm not sure. Um, when you look at this man's resume and you know anybody can Google him and you'll see there are pages about all of his great work and his public service. So I'm just gonna give you a snapshot of who this man is. And Secretary White, let me tell you from my heart, thank you so very much for being with us today. I know how hard you work up and down the state, you crisscross the state on a regular basis, and I'm just thrilled that you are here with us today. Jesse White is Illinois' 37th Secretary of State. He was first elected to this office in 1998, and in November of 2018, he was reelected to a record-breaking sixth term. Jesse also became Illinois' longest serving Secretary of State on May 30th of 2014. He is the only person that has won every single one of the 102 counties in Illinois. And for that, we need to have, we should, we should give him a, a round of applause right now just for all of those things right there. <laughs> the... Illinois Secretary of State's office is the largest and most diverse office of its kind in the nation, providing more direct services to the people of Illinois than any other public agency. His office issues state ID cards, vehicle license plates, titles, registers corporations, enforces the Illinois Securities Act. He administers the organ tissue donor program. And he's very passionate about that program. Of course, driver's licenses, and he maintains driver's records. As the state librarian, he oversees the state library and literacy programs. And as, as the state archivist, he maintains records of legal and historic value. Now, prior to his election as Secretary of State, he served as the Cook County Recorder of Deeds, a job to which he was elected first in 1992 and then reelected in 1996. Before that, he served 16 years in the Illinois General Assembly, representing the most culturally, economically, and racially diverse district in Illinois. He also served our country as a paratrooper in the U.S. Army's 101st Airborne Division and as a member of the Illinois National Guard and Reserve. If that isn't enough, he played professional baseball with the Chicago Cubs organization, which was followed by a 33 year career with the Chicago Public Schools as a teacher and administrator. Now, most of us know about the Jesse White tumbling team. He established this in 1959 to serve as a positive alternative for children residing in and around the Chicago area. Since its inception, more than 17,500 young men and women have performed with the team. He has spent 58 years working as a volunteer with the team to help kids stay off of gangs, drugs, alcohol, and smoking and to help set at-risk youth on the path to success. He earned his Bachelor of Science degree from Alabama State College, which is now the Alabama State University, in 1957. Born in Alton, Illinois, he lives on Chicago's near north side. He has two daughters, Glenna and Lorraine, two grandchildren, Jesse and Susan. <sighs> that was a lot. Mm -hmm. So without further ado, and as I said, how do you introduce somebody who needs absolutely no introduction? My friend, our friend, the greatest Secretary of State that Illinois has ever had, the Honorable Secretary Jesse White. Eric, thank you very much. Uh, license for life for you. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you very much. I just want you to know that I deeply appreciate uh, and have enjoyed our friendship. And I wanted people to know that not only have you taken on the job, but you've taken on the responsibility that goes with it. And I just want to, them to know that uh, you have a friend in me. It's been an honor for me to have been able to serve the people of the state of Illinois for the past 23 and a half years. My mission is to be a responsible individual, be a by duty station, discharge by duties to the best of my ability every day. I used to jump out of perfect good, perfectly good airplanes, served with the 101st Airborne Division, second airborne battle group. And uh, with my 35 jumps, I learned early on that when you take on a job, you should take on a responsibility that goes with it. And that's what I've done in this wonderful office. It is, as you said, the largest office of its kind in the United States and by mission to serve the people of the state of Illinois in a manner which they, des they, they deserve to be, be served. I'm proud of the fact that I'm the head librarian for the state of Illinois, and I visited 2,500 of our libraries across the state of Illinois. And before I leave, I plan to complete my tour of duty, travel to all of the 5,000 libraries because they serve as the light at the end of the tunnel, the safety net, the source of information to the people of this wonderful state. It also put, it's put in the posture by which the older people, the young people, and come there to become better educated, better informed. It's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. And then of course, the Oregon to Teach Donor Program, which I think Bob, I think you hosted uh, in your community. And I just wanna thank you for that because here in Illinois, we're proud of the fact that we have 7.3 million people who have signed to become a part of the Oregon to Donor Program. One person can provide life or improve the quality of life for 25 individuals. We ask that when you're alive and well, give blood. When you're no longer here, give organs. When you've done those two things, you've made a positive impact upon society. One person can provide life for a food of quality life for 25 individuals. My brother was a pharmacist at the Lakeside VA Hospital. He wasn't feeling well. My mother asked me to take him to the doctor because he was complaining about a headache. I said, Ma, he's a pharmacist. He knows how to take care of a headache. Well, as it turned out, I eventually took him to the doctor's office and they examined him and he realized that he was suffering from an aneurysm. So we took him over to Loretto Hospital. They said, you need to take him to the University of Chicago Hospital. We took him there. And while he was being examined, oh, a member from the region of Oregon Banks asked me, if by chance he happens to pass away, can we use his organs for transplantation purposes? I thought it was an experimental program. So I told him, don't bother me, leave us alone. And as it turned out, they put him on life support, and two years later, he two, he was two days later he passed away. Two years later, my sister became ill and was in dire need of a kidney. There was not a match within the family, so she put her name on the organ and tissue donor list. And as a result of someone who had a giving spirit, she was able to live an additional twenty eight years. So there's a lot to be said about the organ and tissue donor program. I was asked to try to hit, improve the numbers of people on our organ and donor, uh, donor list. And so we decided that right now, well, at that particular time, only 18 year olds could say I become a part of the organ and tissue donor program. And then so I decided that maybe we should encourage those 16 and 17 year olds when they get their driver's license to say I become a part of the organ and tissue donor program. But as it turned out, they did, they did it in mask. And as a result of that wonderful program where these 16 and 17 year olds are going to the Secretary of State's office to get the driver's license stickers and state ID, we're proud of the fact that 215,000 of these young people have put their name on the list. We cannot use their organs uh, without the permission of their parents. But when they reach age 18, then of course we will respond to their wish. And so I just wanna thank the just wonderful clerk of ours for hosting that wonderful, wonderful donor program. I think you had a, something in, in your community. And of course, you know, you and I are, have been the best, fr best of friends for a long period of time. And I just want you to know that I deeply admire and have the greatest amount of respect for you. And so with that, uh, I graduated, I left Lincoln Park High School, which is now Walla High School. And I wanted to go to college. I didn't have a sequence in math. So 
Beloit College says, no, we cannot uh, accept you. Right? Ripide College said, we cannot accept you. And then uh, Northwestern said, they could not accept me. Then finally, Tennessee State said, well, we'll accept you, but you cannot play baseball because, or basketball because you're too short. Well, I scored 68 points in a high school game. And uh, so I could shoot the jump shot quite well. And so uh, Alabama State in Montgomery, Alabama said, we'll take you. And so I played basketball and baseball and I taught gymnastics at that wonderful institution. After every basketball game, Dr. Martin Luther King, who was my minister, would uh, meet me and give me $20. That was legal then, it's not legal now. But at church, he said, Rosa Parks, the domestic worker, has been arrested for sitting in the wrong part of the bus. In the South, for those who don't know, there's two, two placards. One that said, colored to the back, whites to the front. Well, she sat in the wrong part of the bus. And as a result of that, she was arrested. And so at church, Dr. King said, I have been asked to lead the effort to desegregate the Montgomery Transit System and I have agreed to do so, and I'm going to use an unviolent means approach. He said, I'm a student of Gandhi, and Gandhi was instrumental in bringing about the independence for the Indians of, of, from the, from the, from, for, the, for, for the Indians. And so he said, if you get struck on one cheek, you turn so you get struck on the other cheek. And so I raised my hand. He said, just wait, what can I do for you? I said, you know, Dr. King, I'm from Chicago, and we don't operate like that. He says, just, just follow the script. You do those things and more, the victory will be on our side. And as it turned out, through his efforts and the efforts of the people in Montgomery, uh, they desegregated the Montgomery Transit System. Later on in life, I played baseball in the Cub organization. I was signed a contract, and then I was scheduled to go to spring training, and four days before going to spring training, I was drafted into the Army. So instead of going to spring training, I ended up going to Banksy training at Fort Littlewood, Missouri. And then from there, I decided while I was at Fort Littlewood, Missouri, I decided I wanted to learn how to jump out of airplanes. So I went to jump school at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, and we did, uh, I did 35 jumps. Vice President Nixon was being spat upon and stoned in Caracas, Venezuela. And 10 aircraft from my base took off, heading for Caracas to quell the unrest and to save our, our president. Well, as it turned out, we got close to uh, South America, the planes turned and we headed back to Fort Campbell. And Lieutenant said that the first Marine Division has landed and we've been ordered to return to our base. He said, the bad news is that it's gonna be a night jump. We had never jumped at night. We always jump during the day. And it's kind of tough because you cannot see your equipment, you have to feel. And so as it turned out, the 10 aircraft uh, let the troops troops jump at the motor drop zone. And as it turned out, everything was all, all was well. So the bottom line is this, I enjoyed my military service. And uh, I just want these young people to know that military life is a good life. So if you want to pursue that career, please do so. And so I'm ready for any questions that you may have. Where do we begin? Um, we, we have a number of questions in the chat, um, but I want to ask you, you've written a book. Um, where can, um, could you just um, discuss, it? does your book um, talk about your life and where can one purchase your book? Well, I think they could call me and I could, they could call 312-266-7498. That's the Jesse White Tubman team office. And uh, they're there in okay. Hawk. Okay, if somebody would put that in the chat, that, that would be great. So that would be the next question. The Jesse White Tumblers team, how, what, what inspired you to get that start? And I've seen them a number of times. They're very active, engaged. And Mr. Secretary, the last time I saw you, you were standing on your head. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> as a part of my scholarship at Alabama State University in Montgomery, Alabama, I played baseball, basketball, and taught gymnastics. And I learned my gymnastics skills from a fellow by the name of Vince Schoenfeller here in Chicago at Seward Park. And then I used those skills to help me to respond to the scholarship that was awarded to me at Alabama State. 
And then later on, I worked for the park district, taught school during the day, worked for the park district at night, was asked to pull the gym show. And from that one gym show in December 1959, came to Jesse White Tumley team. We are 62 and a half years old. Uh, we've had over 17,500 young people to come through the program. We have eight units. We've traveled to Zagreb, Croatia, Belize, Israel, China, Tokyo, Japan, Hong Kong, Honolulu, Hawaii, Honolulu, Hawaii, uh, Bermuda, the list goes on and on. Big 10, uh, NBA, the list, as I said, is unbelievable. We teach these young people to love their fellow man and woman and never ever dislike anyone because of race, creed, or color. We also want them to be in school on time every day and have one aim in mind and have to get the best education possible. We insist upon them always, always looking up. And the only time we want them to look down in life is to tie their shoes. If someone yeah. says that you cannot achieve, I That's want right. them to say, watch me and put right. your, your efforts forward to be a success in life or to respond to that challenge. And so uh, next month we will perform uh, for the Big Ten Championship down in Indianapolis, Indiana. Uh, last night we were at DePaul for uh, my high school, Lincoln Park High School. It used to be called the Wall of Wolves and now it's called Lincoln Park Lions. And we performed uh, there and they we gave me an award. They did. A lot of people didn't know I was a, I had graduated from that wonderful institution, but it was a wonderful, wonderful night. And then uh, last week we performed for the city high school championship at UIC. And it was a great event, place was packed. And it lets us know that high school basketball and our young people are important to all of us and we should right. go out and support them. Thank you for that. Um, we have a question um, from one of your former employees, Ed Michalowski. He wants to know if you still enjoy fishing. Oh, <laughs> seven days a week. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, yes, I enjoy fishing. I go up to Canada every every year, and I fish here in Illinois. And here in Illinois, you have some of the best fishing ever. Okay. So you're getting a chance to do a little more of that these days. I will be. I'm, okay. still, I'm still the secretary of state, still at my duty. Yes, you station. are. <laughs> I'm still discharging my duties to the best of my ability. And I'm at work uh, every day. Now, somebody asked a question with so many duties at the secretary of state's office, what do you see as the most important function of their off of your office? Or is there a most important function? Well, every fun every part of this office is it's important. It's, a, it's something that will help an individual or one of our constituents who may have a problem. They want to get from point A to point B. We want to be there to, to assist them. I have, I receive phone calls at home. Before I leave home, I receive about 15 phone calls on my personal phone. And my personal phone, uh, as they would say, is in the telephone book. Yeah. <laughs> and then my cell number, uh, but most of my, I, surprised by so many people having my cell number and whatever the problems may be i want to be there to help them to get from point a to point b to resolve it to the best of my ability well you take public service to a whole different level um your office again has that does so many things and and i understand that um some what what do you suppose that the greatest and challenges and opportunities will be there for the next person that fills your shoes? Well, we just want to make sure that that individual will not only take on the job, but take on the responsibility that goes with it. And it will be at her duty station or his duty station every day and respond to the wishes, the concerns of the people. Because, you know, as a politician, many times when you're out on the campaign trail and you're asking individuals to support you, uh, after they get in office, then uh, you, then they forget about you. You can't yeah. call them. They cannot assist you. They cannot do anything for you. And uh, I, I take that. It, I, I don't like that. It it's, puts a bit of pill, bit of taste in my mouth. I believe that when you become an elected official, you should be accessible to yeah. the people who elected you. If they have a problem, you should be there to respond to it. 
Agreed. Um, our chief um, Cedric Giles says, thank you, Mr. Secretary, for you and Fred Ledbed letting my day and myself be aware of your secret fishing spot in Canton, Illinois, back in the day. <laughs> Biggest bass we ever caught to this day. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what, um, wonderful county. Fishing um, is fabulous. <laughs> Um, one of our directors, uh, Erica Sanchez, asked, what is the hardest decision you've had to make at, at the Secretary of State's office besides retiring? Well, there are times when you have employees who may not have, they've taken on the job, but they have not taken on the responsibility that goes with it. You may have to uh, show them the door, make them a part of the Exodus program. And you hate <laughs> to do that, but sometimes it has to be done. You are an administrator. You know what I'm talking about. I do. <laughs> putting putting I do. people out in the, in the cold, so to speak, is one of the toughest things that uh, I've had to do. But I want to make sure that we're paying you for your services. Those services must be rendered. Agreed, sir. And I certainly know exactly what you're talking and about. And that you have to be at your duty station on time every day. Absolutely. Um, there's a question. Uh, what are some of the uh, important goals that you have for your retirement? You're not, you're, you may be leaving the Secretary of State's office, but I, I got to figure you're going to still be engaged on some level. So do you, what are you going to do? My question Besides is, fishing. <laughs> How do you know I was going to be engaged? <laughs> well, we have put this office into a posture by which the people can be proud. And my successor, uh, I want I want my successor to be just as energetic and just as concerned about the delivery of services to the people of the state of Illinois as I have. And so I'm going to be monitoring this office Good. and I want to be able to tap this person on the shoulder and say, uh, you may be going the wrong direction with this. Here's what I consider to be the best course to follow. Or if you need some assistance, pick up the phone and call me. And I will be available to you seven days a week. And Mr. Secretary, I can say um, that you've done that for me because um, I, when I assumed the duties of the Recorder of Deeds office, you made yourself available. You came to the office. Uh, when we um, cut the ribbon on our Veterans Center, you were there to help us with that process. So I thank you for enriching my life and helping me as I navigated um, through county government. I appreciate it so, so very much. And I know that you're a man of your word that you're gonna do what you say you're gonna do. And the next person that follows you in that, in that seat, I'm glad they're gonna be able to have you on speed dial. Okay, thank you. <laughs> and thank you for your, your support for the DD 214s, you know, where oh, yeah. you collect them and you store them, you process them. And a lot of the veterans have benefited tremendously from that. Matter of fact, I think my document is with you as well. It is. Uh, thank We're you keeping for, it safe, sir. We're keeping it safe. You. Thank you for a job well done. Somebody wants to know your secret to success and longevity in the area of public service. We know that, you know, there's a lot of, um, distension out there as it relates to public service. Um, some people, like you said, when they get elected, they disappear or they, they don't understand that they really have a duty and responsibility to the people that they serve. So what do you think has been your greatest success in longevity in the area of public service? Well, as I said before, you take on the job, you take on the responsibility that goes with it. And you have to be at your duty station every day or be accessible to your office every day and make sure that you, you lead and, and not say that I've, 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 I've been able to attain this position. And that's all I want to do is become the Secretary of State in name and name only. No, you have to discharge your duties in a manner which people could be proud. Um. You know, you've been such an inspiration to young people. Uh, nobody has to ask you the question, you know, um, have you, um, you know, reached out to young people? Because you certainly have done that both through the Secretary of State's office and through um, the Jesse White Tumblers. 
um, it, as far as the Jesse White tumblers are concerned, the, are, do any of them stick out as just exceptional young people that you think are going to really be <laughs> successful? Yes, we have doctors, we have lawyers, we have policemen, we have firemen. My mission is to not only teach these young people how to tumble, but I want them to be able to put something between their ears every day on the scalp. We're talking about knowledge and that will carry them far. And of course, with this program, their grades must be, they must have a C average. Otherwise they have to take part in our tutoring program. They cannot tumble. Wow. What's, what's good about this program is that once you have graduated from high school and you're going on to college, we give you anywhere between $3,000 to $8,000 a year for, towards your scholarship. And then there are job opportunities for them when they come back from college during the summer months. So we follow these young people from beginning to the end. So we have a lot of college grads. We have people, young people out here, out here, out here in society who are following in my footsteps. They understand that I teach them to love their fellow man and woman, never ever dislike anyone because of race, creed, or color. And I also want them to understand too, that we're counting on them to be the best they could be. And we want them to share that knowledge and those experiences with the young people that they're working with. You ask one of these young persons, who they rather deal with, the police or Mr. White? And they'll point, give me Mr. White. And he, I don't want to deal with him because it's called tough love. The spoken words and my follow-up will carry the day. And I also want to thank uh, Rotary Club too, because every summer we have what's called a trunk party. We have Rotary One that has always stepped in to give us many of the supplies that we're going to give these young people when they go off to college. And uh, we've been doing that for about eight or nine years, about nine years, I think. And we're going to do it again this year. So if the young person has graduated from high school, then they will contact my office and then we will ask them to uh, make sure that they send us a, a statement that they have graduated from high school or going to graduate from high school. And then they also have to show us their acceptance letter indicating they've been accepted to a, a four-year institution. Right. Then they qualify to become a part of the Trump party. 550 young people participated in this program. And we're just glad to make sure that we give them the tools that they need, the supplies that they need, and let the mothers and the fathers work on the scholarship. Wow. That's tremendous. That, that, that is absolutely tremendous. This takes place in every, every July. And I don't know what the date is right now, but we're working toward getting the supplies that we give these young people, computers, Chromebooks, uh, the list goes on and on. We have a question from our um, deputy clerk of communications. First of all, she wants to say congratulations and thank you for your tremendous career in public service. What will you miss most about your job as Secretary of State? Going to work every day and being of service to the people of the state of Illinois. But the bottom line is this, I will be accessible. So people like there are times when an individual will say, uh, I'm disabled, or someone will say, uh, I'm a senior citizen. I say, well, we have a program called a professional courtesy. If you're disabled, you're a senior citizen, you're a vet, or you have a, 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 a doctor, a lawyer, or someone you want to get into the Secretary of State's office to get your driver's license or your state ID, we will get you to the front of the line. You take care of your business and go back to where you need to be. So that's something that I initiated that I'm proud of. And when I see these senior citizens or these people who are disabled, uh, they applaud, come in and thank me for being kind and being considered of their condition. Okay. Um, Mr. President, uh, you have a question? Uh, comment. I just oh, am so ahead. grateful for uh, the secretary's service. Uh, we met 
back in the 70s when you brought the tumblers to Concordia University. I was director of student activities at that time. And you were uh, charming then and you're charming now. And it's funny, uh, you've got that great charisma and persona that makes you a strong leader. And at the same time, your heart is very visible. And uh, I'm just grateful for what you're sharing yourself with our state and for your leadership over these years. Thank you, thank you very much. Deep All appreciate. right, who is this? Um, um, one of our Rotarian members, Gabe Fakori, is asking how many countries have you traveled to during your career with the Jesse White Tumblers? Roughly about 19, 19 cities. Okay. And, and we've also have done oh, probably about 15 NBA teams, uh, about eight football teams, NBA, NFL, uh, high schools, colleges, and universities, the list goes on and on. We have traveled all over the, all over the state of Illinois, all over the, not the state of Illinois, all over this country and the state of Illinois. And as I indicated, those foreign countries, it's been an eye-opening experience for my young people because they, they see people from a, another ethnic background and they, I tell them, try to learn to speak another person's language, eat their mm -hmm. food, learn their dance, learn about their culture, mm -hmm. benefit from that. And never ever dislike anyone because of race, creed, or color. I've, ex I've gone down that road. It's an ugly road to travel. And I don't want them to ever go down that path. Mm -hmm. Mia Wolf wants to thank you for always being there for her and her family. She doesn't say what that is, but I bet there's a number of people that you have touched their lives in very positive ways um, throughout your career. Um, let's see. George is saying you're a successful politician, but amazingly, you do not come across as a politician, but as a clean gentleman who cares. What's the secret? <laughs> Everybody wants well, your secret. You know, I just... I believe that when you take on a job, you take on a responsibility that goes with it. I th believe that you should be at your duty station every day. I believe that there are people out there who rely on your service, and I want to be able to provide those meaningful services to those people in a timely manner. And uh, I just enjoy public life. I've enjoyed working with the young people. I've enjoyed jumping out of airplanes. I played eight years of professional baseball in a club organization. I enjoyed it. Everything that I've ever done in my life. And I used to play drums in the band and orchestra in, in, uh, in high school. And so I've done a lot of things in life, but and everyone has been enjoyable. Well, our time is far spent here. Thank you for being so gracious and sharing this time with us. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for making yourself available. I know each and every one of the people who are on this call. Now, many of our people uh, from the clerk's office, they're having their lunch right now and they are watching you now. So they, I, I guess they're chomping away, but they're also watching you as well. But I appreciate you making yourself available. Sir, you are a credit to your country, to your, your city, to your state, to your race, and to all of us. And thank you for being such an inspiration and a positive uh, person that we can look to on how we should behave. Now, myself as a politician, uh, myself as a community uh, servant, and as a public servant, I look to you, sir. Uh, and your shining light there. And I just, I'm just, I'm just thankful. Thankful and grateful for you. Well, so Mr. You. President, um, that concludes our um, time with time with the Honorable Jesse White, but he just finished saying he's accessible. If anybody wants to call him up, give him a call. <laughs> so I'll end our presentation here. Uh, I yield the floor and thank you again, um, the Honorable Secretary of State, Jesse White. Karen, thank you very much for not only taking on your job, but duties that uh, accompany you. Thank you.